Do you want to upgrade your Anytone 578 mobile CPS software as quickly as possible? Updating your radio firmware is crucial to having your radio function properly. You've likely fussed with it before when you updated your laptop or your PC. It can be annoying, but it's one of the easiest ways to ensure that your radio stays working correctly. Whether it's for fixing errors, glitches, or adding new functions to your radio, firmware updates can significantly improve your radio's performance quality. Hi, I'm Sebastian, KB0TTL with tech support here. So let's switch to your computer and begin updating your radio. Okay, so right now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is show you how to download the newest CPS software and firmware updates uh, just from our website website here uh, from the support section. Uh, so when I do this, I'm just going to go over here to bridgecomsystems.com and let's go ahead and access our support page. And let's go ahead and get our software here from the menu. Okay, so this is going to be listed underneath support as the 578 mobile to so any tone mobile support. And any tone 578 CPS and firmware downloads. Most recent version we have here is version 1.11. Go ahead and download that. Go ahead and open up the file here that we just now downloaded. Go ahead and do extract all and just select a folder, just any spare space on your C uh, drive. I'm going to call this any tone. 578-111 for, of course, version, um, of course, for version 1.11, and creating the directory and extracting the files. All right, so we have our newly extracted directory. Let's close out of that zip file here. We have our newly extracted directory which has our CPS software and our firmware software. Um, so in order to get into today's firmware update, first of all, we're going to go ahead and install the newest CPS so that we can access the firmware. Go ahead and double click. On this uh, D578UV setup file, I'm going to right click. I'm going to tell it to go ahead and run as administrator. If you get this little pop-up here that Windows has protected your PC, it's simply saying, hey, this is a piece of software we hadn't seen before. So we're going to go ahead, or we're going to run anyway. Do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device? Sure. I'm going to go ahead and select English from my language. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to create a desktop icon. I'm going to install. And I'm going to go ahead and launch the CPS software that I've just installed for my 578 mobile. Okay, so what's the first thing we're going to do? We're going to go ahead and read the code plug from our radio. If you already have a new code plug or a code plug that you've created installed to your radio, we're going to go ahead and read the code plug from our radio and we're going to go ahead and save that code plug. Whenever you update the firmware on this mobile, you also have to do a factory reboot so you'll lose any information in the process that's stored on the radio. So we got to back this up first. And we'll go ahead and read from radio. All right, guys, we're back. And we've gone ahead and uploaded our code plug from our radio. We're going to go ahead and save that code plug. And say file. And say save as. I'm KB0CTL. Go ahead and save that. Okay, guys, so now we're going to go ahead and power our radio down, but we're going to power our radio down holding a couple of buttons in, and then we're going to release one of the buttons, and that's going to put us in firmware update mode. Uh, for this, I'm actually going to go ahead, now that I've saved the uh, RDT file code plug, I have a copy of it here on my computer to load right back on. I'm going to go ahead and do here. 
is I'm going to go ahead and unplug my programming cable from the side of the radio. That'll get plugged right back in here in a moment. So you see the exit and the menu button. The exit and the menu button down here at the bottom. And this power button. I'm going to push menu and exit at the same time. I'm going to hold power until it powers off. I'm going to wait a few seconds. I'm going to release that power button until this red light right here comes on. Then we know we're in firmware update mode. It may take a few tries to get this right. So be patient with yourself. I didn't get right the first time either. Hit menu and exit simultaneously. Then power. Power's off. Wait a few seconds. Release that power button. We have a red blinking light. So we are in firmware update mode now. Now that I'm in firmware update mode, I'm going to go ahead and plug my cable back in. Okay, I'm going to meander back on over to my screen here. And in doing so, I'm going to go up here to the tool menu. I'm going to go to firmware upgrade. And you see this little button down here below, this little shield looking thing flashing on the bottom. Go ahead and give that a push. We're launching another app to update the firmware. It's a separate app. So click yes. I'm going to go ahead and open a firmware update file. I know I am on COM4, so I'm going to select COM4 from my settings, as you saw before there. Whichever COM you had last time, guess what? It's going to be that same COM port again this time, as long as you're on the same computer, that is. Open the update file. So you know that file that we went ahead and unzipped our installation files here to? We're going to go ahead and go back there. Any tone 578111. Here's our firmware folder though, instead of our CPS folder. And this is our SPI file that we're going to go ahead and upload. So I'm going to go ahead and say to open that. File open succeed. Good so far. I'm going to go ahead and write that to our radio to go ahead and update our firmware file. Continue. And just wait. And we've, ri we've written our firmware to the radio. Now just turning our camera back to the radio. Notice the radio is powered completely off. As we power this on, we're going to go ahead and do a reinitialization of the radio or a factory reset. So to proceed, I'm going to go ahead and push in on this knob. I'm going to hit P2 and I'm going to hit power simultaneously. So just to show knob. P2 and power simultaneously. My hand's going to cover up the front of this as I push all three buttons. Sorry about that, but you're about to get the gist of it. Do I want to reinitialize my radio? Yes. I'm going to hit menu to confirm. Radio reinitialize. Confirm. And we're going to boot back into our radio and let's put our code plug back now. So we now have blank radio. We're going to put our code plug back. So just back over to the computer here. I'm going to exit out of my firmware update program. See this code plug? Yeah, we saved the code plug to a file. This code plug is still populated in our CPS. So right now, all we have to do is write it back. Come for. And continue. All 
All right, so we're done writing our firmware to our radio. There you have it, guys. There you have it, folks. Uh, basically, we've just gone ahead and we've updated to the newest possible firmware on your radio. If you've had your radio and you've been using it for a few months and you have not yet updated to the new version 1.11 or whichever the newest version is at this time, go ahead and do that. I believe you'll be surprised at how much better, how much faster your radio works, as well as the updates to any new features that the radio might have had within that last firmware release. And also, if you have not yet purchased one of our SkyBridge hotspots to access literally hundreds of talk groups uh, from the privacy of your own home and without accessing a repeater, uh, please check out our new SkyBridge hotspot and go ahead and place your order for that here as well today. And that's the fastest way to update the CPS software on your Anytone 578 mobile. Many factors go into successfully using your radio. Updating your CPS software is just one of those. By regularly updating your CPS software with the most recent update, you'll be avoiding the trouble of calling support to figure out what's wrong with your radio. Do you have more questions about the Anytone 578 mobile CPS software? that we didn't cover today? Let us know down below in the comments. To keep up to date about new things about amateur radio, click the notification bell. Thanks again for watching. I'm Sebastian, KB0TTL with Ridgecom Systems and 73.